this is Dread from Epic Builds. And in today's video topic, we will go over Fizz War slash Warpath Voidless Void Knight. A fun use of that Leviathan Carver that's been sitting in your stash. After you're done watching the video, if you like the content, I'd suggest liking and commenting on the video, as that's the best way to support the channel, and also the best way to tell YouTube I'm doing a good job. So when patch 8.3 came out, it had a lot of changes to the Sentinel skills. Warpath was one of those. It was changed to have a much stronger void and fire support, while they forgot to add physical damage support anywhere. That was kind of sad, as one of my favorite builds of the past was two-handed Fizz Warpath Forge Guard, and I attempted to revive it this patch with middling results. But after a lot of testing and theory crafting, I came up with this idea. War Slash was added this patch, and it allows you to channel Warpath for 5 seconds to release a big semicircle slash, which gives you more damage in area per second of that channel, and it is really fun to use. The main problem with it though, is it completely goes against what Warpath is meant to do, to spin. Stopping to cause a War Slash was just bad because it means you weren't spinning, which is the biggest strength of Warpath being the immunity to stuns and being able to move while dealing damage. And this leads me to believe that War Slash was very bad. It is still very bad by itself, but when combined with another node in the tree, it becomes much, much more than just a bad like node on the tree. We also have the Echo node, which allows our Warpath to echo behind us. The problem with this node is the Echoes don't move to targets, making them useless against enemies that just walk out of Warpath and their spawning condition is rather annoying to implement normally. But did you know that the little Warpath Echoes can War Slash too? That's where this starts to get a little spicy. Since every little Echo can War Slash, it completely negates the biggest problem of War Slash, i.e. not spinning constantly, and since the War Slash can deal a large amount of damage in a large area, it negates the issues of the little Echoes being useless. This combo allows us to make our memes become reality. Now with the way War Slash scales, it doesn't really care much about attack speed. And we don't care about critical strike chance much thanks to the 10% base crit in the tree for Warpath. What weapon type does that really leave us with? Well, Leviathan Carver is a unique that was also added in patch 8.3, as with the 210 flat physical, 280% increased melee physical and fizz penetration, it makes a decent weapon. The biggest problem with it for Warpath normally is the 0.76 attack rate on the weapon is rather punishing, but thanks to the fact that we're procking War Slash and not actually attacking with War Slash, it means we get all the benefits of the sword and none of the downsides, letting us get some beefy War Slashes. All of this combined with the cherry on top, since we are so focused on fizz damage, it lets us invest heavily into armor shred, as it's the best with physical damage. And since our little echoes in place for about two seconds, like the little echoes they stay in place for two seconds, even though they have less attack speed because of Leviathan Carver, it means we still get large amounts of armor shred. With all that being said, let's get into the video, shall we? All right, here we are in game with the build here. We got fizz. Crit War Path War Slash. So the general rotation of the build is to turn on your anomaly, turn on your devouring orb, set up your sigils, and then pretty much just circle around a target until you see some war slash has happening. Once you see about one to two war slashes, you can actually do a reversal trick and get a large amount of damage out of this. And as you saw there, that was a 400k crit from our big war slash, while the little mini war slashes generally hover around 140, 150k. So we actually have a lot of burst on single target. Now, obviously, single target is a little bit more different than that because we can't burst down uh, bosses as easily like Oribus, but it's good enough and it clears Monolith good enough. And it's like 240 plus corruption. So I don't really have a problem with it. And it is a little bit clunky though sometimes yeah with that being said let's get into the skills shall we so for warpath itself this is the first time i will recommend you probably want a at least plus one to warpath to make this work because you need almost all of these nodes except for this one extra node in whirling steel 
but all the rest of the nodes you 100% need because it makes the build function and work smooth as butter. So we take two points into Unchained, one point into Reckless Spin, making our Warpath got zero. So when we move around, our Warpath always counts zero. And then we take two points travel into Molten Path. Then we take five points into Giant Splitter. So after spinning for at least two seconds, you do a War Slash at the end. This deals more damage and hits in a larger area. Now this is a kind of a semi-circle. And the way it works is it will aim where your cursor is. So if I aim over here, it will aim over there. Now, if I aim over here, it will aim over there. So always make sure that your cursor is moving in the right target. Now, the little ones, they actually like to auto target, which is really nice. As you can tell, they will actually auto target towards enemies for you. So uh, that's really neat. That's like really neat for like their AI. And of course, uh, we take, uh, we need all five points in this, then two points travel into Void Spiral, uh, one point into Echo Knight. So the reason why we're taking this node and not the rest of the nodes is Ma of the Deep does not apply to your War Slash, so it's completely worthless for us. And of course, the Time Rot Chance is completely worthless, so we only need Echo Knight. Now, Echo Knight is the node that's making it, so you have the Echoes. I know it's weird to see like the non- like, like non-purple echoes, but yes, they do exist. Uh, most people don't usually use them because obviously when they're echoing, you usually do Void Knight. So yeah, uh, that's really strong. Uh, like I said, it has really weird AI. Uh, you can't go back and forth. You actually need to go in a circle or something like that. Usually a circle works and you get a lot of them or you go in a straight line. That works too while you're clearing monoliths and stuff like that. But yeah, you cannot go, you cannot go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You have to at least travel four meters and then travel back. And that works, but you can't just go like this. You have to actually like move, quote unquote, in a straight line for at least four minutes. Well, move like it, it's, it's weird. Just move, just move. That's all you need to know. Just move. <laughs> then one point travel into Iron Reach. Two points into Whirling Steel. You always can put an extra one here, or you can put an extra one in Quicksilver Wind. And this damage does apply. This does apply to the War Slash. I tested it. The problem is we don't have enough points to Warpath to really fill it out. And of course, five points into Cyclone of War. Now, this base crit applies to everything, including the War Slash. I don't know if this is intentional or not. It would be pretty dumb if it was not intentional but it seems like as though it gains the big war slash at the end gains the crit chance from this because you're technically still spinning when you finish the war slash, which I can prove here. So we'll just get a war slash set up. It gets it in the instance that you lose the crit. Like it's like instant. So as soon as you stop war pathing, it's instant damage. And then that crit ends, right? Because you're no longer spinning. I don't know if that's intentional, but it better dang well be intentional because that'd be pretty dumb if it wasn't. So moving on. Uh, one thing you can do is there is a belt. I can't remember its name. Uh, there is a belt. Uh, I think it's the. It's the. I believe it is the the thorn belt. There is a belt that gives plus one to physical skills. Here it is. The Thorn Slinger. This will give a plus one to Warpath. You can use it. The problem is for me, Bleed is very laggy. But if you have the ability to run this and Bleed doesn't lag you, then you can actually gain an extra point. Take the extra point out of this and put it into two points into Quicksilver Wind and you'll be much quicker than what I am in the video as movement speed is kind of nice with this kind of build. That's just one piece of advice I would have in terms of Warpath's levels. Now for Devouring Orb, stereotypical Devouring Orb setup, nothing really different here. Sigils, stereotypical Sigil setup, not really anything different here, just using it for the increased damage. Uh, reversal, so this is your stereotypical hit damage uh, reversal setup. It's just exactly like you do it before. It's the same thing. Not really too much difference here. Uh, then Anomaly, this is a little bit different. 
So we take one point into void touch, one point into immediacy, or oh, this is travel, then one point into immediacy. This makes it so anomaly triggers instantly, so we don't actually lock an enemy out of time, so we can actually kill bosses and stuff without it being awkward. Then one point into time bubble that creates a time bubble for five seconds. We're gonna boost that to 10 seconds, then make it go all the way to 12 seconds. Then of course that uh, makes it so the time bubble is cast on you, so we always get the time bubble. And then we take five points into decimation, so we get a bunch of crit chance. Uh, this is one of the main reasons we are Void Knight, other than the Echo stuff, obviously, as this crit chance is rather important, as after the brutal savage nerfs to lunge has made it so every build that requires crit in Sentinel to either have crit, a bunch of base crit in the tree, or be a Void Knight with decimation. So that kind of sucks one point into manipulation normally you'd have two points but we don't care about attack speed much uh one point the health leech travel it's like it doesn't really matter then three points into swift rest so we get the additional cooldown recovery speed so instead of 12 seconds the cooldown is 9.2 seconds so you can keep it up same thing with uh sigils and reversal and stuff like that so the cooldown recovery speed is nice but the main reason we're using time bubble is for the crit because, uh, you know, they decided that Sentinel's not allowed to have crit anymore, so we have to do this to make sure we have enough crit. But that's pretty much it for those, uh, for uh, for the skills. Now for the passives here, uh, we take two points into Overwhelm. The two extra Fizz doesn't really matter, but, you know, it helps us get to the max in Sentinel. Eight points into Fearless. Of course, we want as much HP as possible. The DR, obviously, because we're Warpath, we're always near things. Then five points into Valiant Charge. This will apply to your... Uh, it's supposed to apply to volatile reversal. I don't know why it doesn't apply to volatile reversal. I'm not entirely sure, but the health is always nice. Then four points in an axe thrower. This is important later on because uh, we're going to go in forge guard, take nine points, the weapons master, one point into peltist. Uh, the strength and the increased melee damage is very strong for us as uh, Sentinel has a dire lack of increased damage. Then, of course, uh, four points in shield breaker. This gives us physical shred on bosses very quickly. Uh, we do have Fizz Shred, the Blessing, that's only good against rares and stuff. The problem is we want as much as possible and this helps us reach the cap much quicker on bosses. Then this is your stereotypical uh, Paladin setup because we take eight points in Defiance for the Ellie res and then seven points in Devour. You can put eight points into Conviction if you feel like as though you have enough HP, but it's really up to you. I wasn't running Conviction. Uh, conviction is actually really strong. The problem is, like I said, HP is really nice too. So it's really up to you on that. Then for Void Knight here, we take 10 points in Abyssal Endurance. You must be wondering, why are we not grabbing all the Smelly Flat Void? Well, with all of our bonuses, especially with the Leviathan Carver, it heavily benefits you just running Fizz damage as running any other damage is kind of inefficient as you don't get the Fizz Pen or the increased Smelly Physical. So it's just much better to focus our points on other things like HP, for instance. Then, of course, six points into World Eater for Leech. Uh, this Leech is really strong. It helps us out. Ten points into Sorrow and Steel for travel because we need the Fizz damage. We also need to get up the tree. Ten points into Void Corruption to give us a bunch of Crit Multi. We are running the Crit Multi boots, but as much Crit Multi is po as good as possible. 55% is a lot for just one point. Then three points into Renouncement for the Vitality for flat HP and to get us all the way up to Echoing Strikes. Because the way the Warpath works is it takes your Echo Chance, doubles it, and uses that per second to Echo. Uh, so we want as much Echo Chance as possible. We reach up to 80% Chance per second, which is pretty much makes it so we always have Echoes behind us when we're clearing Monoliths and makes our Monolith clear rather smooth. But smooth. Eventually, you'll find a way to put in 10 points into Eternal Form for as much HP as possible because we don't have any other so sorts of defenses since we're running a Leviathan Carver, not running a shield or anything because we want as much HP as possible. Then 10 points into Time Legion. Increased melee speed doesn't really matter, nor does the time route chance. We just want the echo chance. And of course, one point to Avatar of Regret. The increased mana cost kind of does a little bit to us. It's a little annoying. And then the reduced attack speed doesn't matter to us all because we don't care about attack speed at all. It's because War Slash is attack it does not depend on attack speed. And that's pretty much it for the passives. Now for the gearing. Uh my idols are okay-ish this time around. Uh this is your perfect idol. Increased melee damage for four seconds when a skill echoes. Uh, this is really strong because you can combine it, ignore that noise, uh, you can combine it with Shred Armor on melee hit, which is one of the main reasons why this build is 
actually decent is because of all the armor shred we get. And of course, same here and same here. These uh, these idols are very easy to find. They're like they like drop all the time. Mainly, you just want the increased melee damage. And then eventually, you want the armor shred. Because I uh, one time I was playing this build and I forgot to put armor shred on the build and I ended up having like two and a half minute boss battles. So uh, make sure you have armor shred. Make sure, otherwise you're gonna have a long boss fights. Then uh, one point, I mean, we uh, we have a bunch of fizz resistance here and necrotic resistance to cap out our reses. My reses are all over the place. The reason why we want as much fizz res is because Solarin step here. Uh, it's real. It's a lot of melee crit, which is really nice. But obviously, you gotta have to run some fizz resistance. But thanks to the what, two by twos being like this. You can actually run fizz resistance idols in the corners, making it so you don't have to worry about fizz res as much. And of course, HP and fire res. It's like, I think I can get rid of, oh, uh, you need to make sure that you're capped while you're spinning as well, because you have that negative 30, which is mandatory this time around because uh, you don't have enough points in Warpath. All right, and then for the rest of the gear, this is your perfect helmet. You probably want it on a Don helmet or a crit multi helmet because the armor is really nice. Because uh, you want as much armor as possible, because that's your only your other defense. Uh, the increased damage while well, skill echoes is really strong. You could run vitality as well, but the armor shred effect is very important. It helps you reach armor shred cap much quicker uh, with less attack speed and stuff like that. And like I said, uh, armor shred is a one to one comparison for us because uh, it does not get reduced for physical damage, which is the majority of our damage. So it's just a percentage more multiplier on bosses which we sorely need. And of course, for the amulet, you want fizz pen or crit multi or fizz percentage, crit chance, you want as much crit chance as possible. As you can tell, we're only about 85%. Obviously, you want to be at 100% because having a war slash not crit feels very bad. So you want as much crit as possible, then resistance, resistance, or you can run frailty and armor shred. Armor shred here rolls up to 100%. So that's actually very strong. So if you're lacking on armor shred, this is the best place to put it because since we're using a unique sword, we don't have armor shred on the sword specifically. Then Leviathan Carver. Uh, so you cannot avoid critical strikes. That means that critical strike avoidance does nothing for you. So you can use all the other bases that Sentinel has instead of all the crit avoid bases, which is actually kind of good. Uh, you take 35% less damage from critical strikes. This pretty much means so. In the Monolith of Fate, you only have 200% crit multi always. Uh, their crit multi never raises. So this pretty much all this says for you, really, it just means you take 15% extra damage from crits. Like you just take 15% of the damage, the extra damage from crits, but that's it. That's all that matters to you because the 35% uh, equals out to that much, right? Because 50% less damage from crits, like you can roll on a two-handed weapon, would make it so crits don't do any extra damage to you, yada, yada, yada. So the 35% less is almost as good. So you don't want to be stacking as much crit as humanly possible, but it's not like as if we're missing crit avoid. And then uh, the fizz is really good. The fizz, like this, this weapon has the equivalent of about four prefixes worth of mods because that melee fizz is about two mods, that increased melee damage is about a mod and a half, and that fizz pen is a mod. So that's like four-ish prefixes. Also, the implicit is insane, because uh, uh, it's almost as much as a, uh, what is it called? The hammer. Uh, an Ebra head, which is like 140, and that's a mace. And like I said, the attack rate's very slow, but as you can tell, War Slash gives two shits about attack speed. So that's really nice. Yeah, that's that's mainly why this build works. Uh, if you don't have a Leviathan Carver, I wouldn't play this build. Uh, there are other Warpath builds you could play, but if you want to play this build, you require a Leviathan Carver. It can be farmed in the Reign of Dragons. Best Warpath chest I've ever made. It's garbage for this build. You must be wondering, why do I say that? Well, that 28 melee fizz damage while wielding a sword, that could be Vitality instead, and as you can tell, I'm only at 2.5k HP. You would rather have Vitality there, because we get a large amount of Fizz from this sword. This is only like a 10% more damage, that 28 flat Fizz. It's a lot more different when you have a sword that has 100 flat Fizz, like Ozoihander, and that's like a 25% like more damage modifier. But since our sword has so much melee physical, this actually doesn't really do much for us. I'm just wearing it because it's the Warpath plus two Warpath chest that has the most amount of damage on it. 
And of course, you either want a bronze curious for more crit if you're lacking crit, or you can use a dawn chest, a dawn chest, which will give you like five, four hundred flat armor, which is really nice as well. Then for the rings, uh, you want at least one mana regen roll somewhere just to make it so when you kind of fuck up in your mana, you're not screwed over. Uh, because you know, you don't want to get screwed over then crit, resistance, endurance, resistance or resistance, like whatever. Uh, it's your perfect belt, other than like what I said, you could use that one belt, the thorny she uh the 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 fizz belt, the fizz level belt. You can use a thorn slinger. Uh this would really help you out because it would give you a lot more movement speed in theory. Uh the problem is like I said, bleed lags my computer, but I would suggest running this. Or if you need the HP, as you can tell, we, we lose a lot of HP while running this. Make sure you have a lot of HP before you do that. Uh, you could run the mana regen here instead of on the ring as well, and then run strength on the ring. Oh, also as well, you want to run strength on the ring because that'll give you increased damage while also giving you increased armor as well. And like I said, armor is our only other defense, uh, you know, other, other defense outside of everything else. Then for the ring, this is your perfect ring. Like this could be on a crit base, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, uh, other than the crit avoid, obviously, but... You know, it's only 6%, doesn't matter. Uh, gloves. These are actually bad gloves for this build because we don't care about attack speed at all. We'd rather want strength, but otherwise, these are pretty good gloves. Uh, so you're on step is not required. So you could run crit multi on the relic, on the helm, I mean, on the helm, and the amulet. And you could have as much crit multi as these boots give you. And then you could run like HP boots. That would in theory be better in some situations. But I had them lying around. You might as well use them, right? It's one of Sentinel's biggest uh, strengths is having so much fizz res lying around. So it's nice to be able to turn that into damage. Then the relic this is your permage perfect relic. Uh, resist like resistance, resistance or frailty. You do eventually want frailty somewhere. Then crit chance, crit multi, or you could run strength there as well. Like I said, strength is really strong for us because. Uh, also, as well, one thing I will note, I do not have it for this build, but I would heavily suggest getting an armor while channeling blessing because that is a lot of armor that you could be using. You don't need uh you don't actually need crit avoid here on Reign of Dragons, so you could run uh 100 percent increased physical damage, which is really strong. Uh you probably still want fizz shred from uh from Hirot because uh you do want to like shred rares down quickly. And that's pretty much it for the rest of it. Yeah, I believe that's pretty much it. Oh, you can run crit chance from Rye to help your crit until you get better crit. And then you could dump it for crit multi or HP or void res or whatever. But it is an option to run crit chance. That's what I'm doing right now to help my crit chance out, as you can tell. And we're at close to 88, 85. 85 is pretty good. You, like I said, you'll still want more, but 85 seems to be good right now. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the gearing. With that being said, thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you're at, and bye.